Australia's Collins-class submarine fleet, comprising six diesel-electric vessels, HMAS Collins, HMAS Farncombe, HMAS Waller, HMAS Dehine Sheehan, and HMAS Rankin, stands as a testament to the nation's naval ambition and adaptability as of March 2025. Born from a 1980s initiative to replace the aging Oberon-class, this fleet emerged through a groundbreaking partnership between Sweden's Cockums and the Australian Submarine Corporation, reflecting a strategic imperative to secure Australia's maritime sovereignty across its sprawling Pacific and Indian Ocean domains. Conceived as a bespoke design rather than an off-the-shelf solution, the Collins class encountered a turbulent genesis marked by excessive noise, unreliable combat systems, and construction delays. Yet, through decades of refinement, it has matured into a formidable capability, though it now faces the dual challenges of an aging platform and an evolving regional security landscape as Australia gears up for its nuclear-powered future under the AUKUS partnership. The procurement of the Collins class was a defining moment for Australian defence, sparked by the 1987 selection of Cockham's Type 471 design over rival bids, tailored to Australia's need for long-range, stealthy submarines capable of operating in diverse oceanic conditions. Managed by ASC at its purpose-built Osborne Shipyard in South Australia, the project aimed to foster a sovereign industrial base, a decision that brought both pride and peril. Costs ballooned and technical hurdles mounted as the design was heavily customized, reflecting the steep learning curve of building a world-class submarine domestically. Deliveries stretched from 1996 to 2003, beginning with HMS Collinged in August 1993 and commissioned on July 27, 1996, after rigorous sea trials and concluding with HMS Rankin on March 29, 2003. Each 77.42-meter, 3,400-ton vessel arrived equipped with cutting-edge features, anechoic coatings to muffle sound, shock absorbers for resilience, and advanced sonar systems, positioning them among the globe's most sophisticated conventional submarines. Early operational woes, however, necessitated extensive post-delivery fixes, underscoring the complexity of this pioneering endeavor. The Collins class serves a multifaceted role, intricately tied to Australia's identity as an island nation with vast maritime borders. Stationed at HMAS Stirling in Western Australia, strategically chosen for its proximity to the Indian Ocean and northern approaches, these submarines are tasked with patrolling sea lanes, protecting trade routes, and deterring potential adversaries across a two-ocean theater. Their stealth and endurance capable of over 50-day missions at depths exceeding 180 meters, enable a spectrum of operations. Intelligence gathering through electronic intercepts, covert special forces deployments, and hunter-killer missions targeting enemy ships and submarines. Deployments have showcased their mettle, from escorting transport ships and monitoring Indonesian communications during the 1999 Interfet mission in East Timor, to excelling in multinational exercises like RIMPAC, where they've sunk simulated targets, including U.S. warships, with tactical finesse. Routine patrols span critical zones like the South China Sea and Australia's Northwest Shelf, safeguarding energy assets, though crew shortages leaving only three boats manned by 2008, and maintenance demands have periodically hampered their operational tempo, a recurring issue into 2025. Upgrades have been the lifeblood of the Collins class, turning early liabilities into strengths and extending their relevance. The original combat system, a persistent weak point, was replaced with the US-developed ANBYG-1 system between 2008 and 2018, starting with HMAS Waller and finishing with HMAS Collins, delivering enhanced firepower and precision akin to that of America's Virginia-class submarines. Sonar and communication upgrades since 2016 have further modernized the fleet, aligning it with contemporary standards. The Life of Type Extension program, slated to begin with HMAS Farncombe in 2026, commits four to five billion dollars to overhaul propulsion systems, diesel engines, generators, and sensors, 
aiming to stretch their service life into the 2040s as a bridge to AUKUS nuclear submarines. However, 2024 saw the shelving of plans for Tomahawk missile integration and optronic masts due to escalating costs and complexity, refocusing efforts on core sustainment. This ambition is underpinned by a $2.2 billion four-year sustainment contract signed with ASC on July 27, 2024, securing over 1,100 skilled jobs in Osborne, South Australia, and Henderson, Western Australia, and reinforcing these regions as naval hubs. Championed by the Albanese government, this deal reflects a broader $4 to $5 billion pledge to maintain the Collins class as a credible strike and deterrence force amid regional uncertainties. Recent operations, however, lay bare the fleet's vulnerabilities. By November 2024, only one submarine remained fully operational, with three, HMAS Farncombe, HMAS Sheehan, and another sidelined by severe corrosion and prolonged maintenance extending HMAS Sheehan's downtime to December 2025. Designated a product of concern in December 2024, the fleet hit its lowest availability since 2012, a stark reminder of the physical toll of nearly three decades of service. The Coles Report of 2012 reshaped their maintenance cycle. Ten years of operation followed by two-year full-cycle dockings, but corrosion and delays in the LOT program have compounded readiness issues. Despite this, operational boats persist in patrolling Australia's strategic waters, albeit at diminished capacity, maintaining a presence amid rising tensions in the Indo-Pacific, where maritime dominance is increasingly contested by regional powers. A comparative lens reveals the Collins class's standing among regional peers, highlighting both its strengths and shortcomings. Japan's Soryu class, succeeded by the Taige class, leverages lithium-ion batteries for superior endurance and near-silent operation, outstripping the Collins class's lead acid battery limitations. With 12 boats either in service or planned, Japan's fleet enjoys greater availability, supported by a mature industrial base and a focus on undersea dominance in the East China Sea. China's Type 039A Yuan class, with over 17 units, employs air-independent propulsion for extended submerged missions, up to two weeks, offering a clear edge over the Collins class's conventional propulsion, though its combat systems and stealth remain less battle-tested against Western benchmarks. Indonesia's Nagapasa class, a trio of South Korean-derived boats, is smaller and less advanced, with limited range and firepower, posing a modest regional threat. The Collins class excels in stealth and long-range capability when fully operational. Its 50-day endurance and anechoic design enabling it to evade detection and strike from afar. Yet, its lack of AIP and current maintenance woes seed critical advantages to Japan and China in sustained underwater presence and fleet scalability. Beyond technical comparisons, the Collins class's strategic value lies in its role within Australia's broader defence posture. As an island nation, Australia's reliance on maritime security amplifies the submarine's importance in deterring aggression, protecting trade, and contributing to regional stability, alongside allies like the United States and Japan. The fleet's ability to operate undetected in contested waters, demonstrated in exercises where HMAS Waller famously sank a U.S. destroyer, offers a psychological edge, even as operational numbers dwindle. The 2024 sustainment contract and LODI program signal a pragmatic push to maximize this asset, preserving jobs and capability as the AUKUS transition looms. Critics, however, argue that the $4 to $5 billion low-T investment might be better redirected to accelerate nuclear submarine acquisition, given the Collins class's declining reliability and the rapid advancements of regional competitors. Ultimately, the Collins class remains a linchpin of Australia's naval power. Its journey from troubled beginnings to operational success, a saga of ingenuity and perseverance. The $2.2 billion ASC deal and upcoming upgrades reflect a resolute commitment to sovereignty and deterrence in a tense geopolitical climate. Yet, with half the fleet grounded in 2024 to 2025, 
and peers like Japan and China forging ahead with larger, more advanced fleets, Australia faces a precarious balancing act. The Collins class can still project power and protect national interests, but its twilight years demand meticulous management to avoid a capability chasm before the nuclear era begins. It stands as both a proud achievement and a cautionary tale, embodying the challenges of sustaining a world-class conventional submarine force in an age of accelerating technological and strategic change.